What's up, beautiful creatives of the world? This is the Light Movement Podcast, and in this episode, we are going to be talking about how to set goals that you'll actually achieve. So it's gonna be super valuable. In this episode, Ellie shares really interesting stories. We give you uh, our favorite books at the very end of the episode uh, that will help you in setting and accomplishing your goals, and you're gonna find out why goals are about doing, not dreaming. So stay tuned, this is a really interesting episode, um, and I'm excited for you to watch it. And if you're new here, welcome to the Light Movement Podcast. This is the podcast where we, as artists, discuss how you can be successful as an artist without selling your soul to the dark art elitist system. I'm your host, Jake Dunn, and I'm joined here today by Ellie Milan, founder of Milan Art and a professional artist of over 27 years now. And yeah, it's going to be one heck of a podcast. So thanks for tuning in. A lot of my goals come out of irritations in my life. Goals are not goals until they're written down. Yeah. You put on your crown and you're like, I'm going to review my goals now. And if I accomplish my goals, the next year I'm going to dip my crown in 24 karat gold. Yeah. <laughs> what am I doing with my life? Like my life is stupid and meaningless. I need to go to Columbia and save children. I am a goal creating machine. Goals are all about doing. They're not as much about dreaming. You are going to fail. You're not gonna hit all your goals. You're yeah. gonna mess up. And that's natural, that's normal. All right, Ellie, so in context to goal setting, I feel like one of the first topics that you have to think about in order to actually have a successful goal um, or to make the right goal is define what success means to you. So how do you go about defining success? Or if you know you have something else that you do before you define success for yourself in terms of setting goals, then mm -hmm. feel free to talk about that too. You know, I think you might be, it's not really how I set goals from that place of what do I define as success? Mm -hmm. But I think probably I defined that for myself years and years ago and it's just there. Mm. And so that's probably why I don't think about that. Mm -hmm. um, and so for me, I think that definition is going to be different for most people. I don't know that there's one one size that fits all for what is success. Mm -hmm. I even think our idea, I'd be interested to hear what your idea what you think is success is and to see if they're different. Mm -hmm. It's like we should write it down on a piece of paper because you, you know, you might just copy me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, to me, I think success well, is now something I that might evolves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm just saying, I think success is something that can evolve over time, but uh. it sounds like what you're talking about is like your vision basically. And that's what you start with in terms of okay, goals. Okay, well, for me, this to me, this is success. This has been the definition of success since I can remember, since my mid twenties. Mm -hmm. And I've taught this to my kids. This is this is, you know, what I what I think. And um, that is success to me is fulfilling your destiny. Mm. So I believe every person has a destiny, a purpose. There's a reason that you're put on this earth, and I think those are different for each person. I don't think we all have the same destiny and it's our job to figure out what it is. What is our purpose? Why are we here? What, are, what is our overarching life, life song, life mandate? Mm. And to be willing to live that out courageously, mm. be, be willing to make decisions from a position of strength, um, and, and not, uh, fear or, you know, you just don't feel like it. And so to me, my, my goals that I set are, from that point, it's like, I'm running after my destiny. I'm, I'm, I'm walking out, you know, what I feel like my life purpose is. So as far as evolving, it sure can evolve because I, I believe I, I see in more clarity what that mm -hmm. is. It doesn't jump all over the place where I'm like, oh man, I was completely wrong. I thought that was what I was supposed to do, but it's not. And it changes, but it definitely deepens and clarifies the older I get as the years go. Mm. I, I like that more. I guess what I was talking about, the question was more simple. Oh. It was more like, uh, you know, the end result um, of what oh, you're looking like, for. Oh, like, oh, like I want to make... Like what is success in this mission, right? Or uh. for this goal specifically. Um, but... I, yeah, I mean, you're talking about your vision for your oh, life, your okay. destiny. I which, misunderstood the question. No, I, I like that because really 
that's where it should start before you even try to determine what is the end result that you're looking oh, for. Oh, okay. Now I understand what you were asking. You were asking like, you set a goal. Let's say it's, um, I want to lose 20 pounds. Mm-hmm. What is success? If you lost two pounds, is it success or do you have to lose the full 20? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I guess it depends on the goal. Mm-hmm. So if I, if I wanted to lose 20 pounds and I only lost two, I would say that was a, a lack of success. Let me ask, I think, uh, probably so I'd, a- I want to hit the mark close to close to the goal yeah yeah so i guess a better question then would be how do you go about setting goals just more broadly i don't know if this is you know how you're supposed to do it but what i do is it usually starts from desire and that is is a lot of that is is some of that is negative meaning what am I sick of? What's irritating me right now? What have, what have I just had it with? What what am I done with? What am I not going to ever do again? What am I, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So like a lot of my goals come out of irritations in my life or mm-hmm. things I'm dissatisfied with, things I want to change. So change. Mm. I want a change in my life. So I need a different result. So I'm going to set a goal that's going to help me get different results. Mm. I would say most of my goal setting is from that year to year, but I have my bigger goals, which are more proactive. And that's what the first thing I was talking about, like, what is my destiny? What am I, what is my purpose? And then, you know, I have what, like 10 year goals, five year goals, three year goals, two year goals. And those are more projections of vision and, and then, you know, tasks to get there, goals Mm -hmm. to get there. But at the beginning of the year, you know, or when you, or, or a lot of times in September, I'll reset goals. So like January, September are my two times that I, I really think about it. And a lot of times I'm, I, it's from irritation, you know, like usually it's, um, you know, how to be more organized, manage my time better, or it's self-improvement type things, you know, things I'm just irritated with myself about. Why September? You said January, September. I don't know. I think because it's like, I mean, I'm not Jewish, but it's the Jewish New Year. It's the it's the start of the fiscal year, right? It's the start of, it school just seems year. like it's start of school year. That's probably mm-hmm. what it is. Yeah. Like to me, it's a start. Mm. It's a starting time. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Yeah. And it, it's kind of like there's this collective energy around yeah. that time. You, I gear you know? up in mm-hmm. September because you, it's like summer is like all about play. Right. And you're, you're more frivolous in the summer. Mm, I usually have spent the summer in Greece and then I come back disorganized and frazzled. (laughs) And so I'm like, time to get serious. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. totally. No, that makes sense. And then you have this, this kind of three month sprint or so from September until the end of the year. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, well, what do I want to do throughout the next year? Yeah. And then I sprint from January to about May. Yeah. And it seems like May to August, I'm like... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's so true. And you know, one thing that I've been kind of embracing a lot recently is the cyclical nature of myself. And I, th- I think it applies to a lot of people, but like I go through cycles myself mm-hmm. and I'm like starting to realize that, okay, as, as much as I want to believe that I can dedicate myself to this new habit or this new pursuit for a long period of time. Yeah. The truth is that I get bored with things. <laughs> <laughs> totally. And you know, I am, a, I am and maybe it's just myself and my temperament, but I can only pursue something for so long before getting bored with it, needing to take a break and then I'll get reinvigorated about it yeah. and come roaring back and, you know, want to dive into it even deeper. Um, so what is your max? Do you think, is it like 90 days or is it more like 30 hmm. days or, um, that's a tough question. I guess it depends on what it is that we're talking about. Like if it's a project and it depends on the scope of the thing too. So if it's something that's really big and exciting, then I mean, probably a year, Mm -hmm. right? Like marketing director, (laughs) becoming a marketing director. I mean, it's been a year since I was the marketing director and now we just trained someone else to be the marketing director. And you know, now it's, now I'm free again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'd, now I'm figuring out exactly what it means to be a CMO or whatever my next role will be. Um, but it's, and I'm in this kind of new cycle where I'm figuring that out. Mm-hmm. And then I'm sure I'll 
be, I'll dive into that. And, you know, we've talked about what that will look like for me personally, um, or professionally, I guess. What is, what is the difference well, anyways I think for that's, us? <laughs> that, that's the whole point of keeping goals fresh. Yeah. If you keep your goals fresh and revisit them, reset them, um, okay, hit those, miss those, let's reset. I think every 90 days at least, then you're going to stick to things longer or you'll, you'll keep it'll. And you know, I, what I've realized about myself is like, and maybe other people are like this. I Mm. don't know. I know my husband is not. So (laughs) that's the only frame of reference I have. And so I feel like totally a weirdo because he definitely is not this way, but I feel like I'm just like some kind of goal setting machine because I have like goals when I, before I go to bed, I have goals for the next day. You know, like when I wake up, Mm -hmm. I I tell myself before I go to sleep, Ellie, when you wake up, the first thing you're going to do is this, 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 you know? And so I have this like goal regimen or, Mm. or targets, let's say before I do my exercise at seven 30 and I have to get that done before seven 30, you know, then I exercise, ride my horse. Then I have goals like until 10 o'clock, then I have goal. So I'm like all day long, I'm, I'm setting goals and hitting goals Mm. and I have weekly goals. I have, you know, every three days I have goals, uh, monthly goals, right? It seems like in January and September, I'm like, what am I irritated with? What changes do I really need to make? And I, I, I set habit goals that I want to aim at, you know, fulfilling. Mm. Yeah, that makes sense. So when you're, you're approaching those, you're not thinking necessarily, okay, so because we set quarterly goals on a business level, yeah, yeah. you don't think come January, or September, what are my goals, you know, now is the time that I set goals, right? right. It's more of like, what do I need to shed so yeah. that I can accomplish the goals that we've already yeah, set? Yeah, they're more personal growth type things. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I like that. And I mean, it kind of relates to I can't remember where I learned it, but like the marketing principle of like every person is either trying to move away from pain or towards pleasure, right? And any circumstance, and there's different angles too. Like you can say, I am trying to lose weight and it really gives insight into the person too. Um, Like you can say either I am trying to lose weight or I am trying to become more fit, Mm -hmm. right? And they kind of give different connotations and they have different consequences and actions too which is interesting sorry i'm just thinking about it from like a psychological yeah marketing i feel like i'm now, always so. doing both of those <laughs> yeah yeah well i'm always it- trying to lose weight and get fit So, all right, let's talk about the quarterly goals then, because that's basically what it is. Um, you're an advocate for quarterly goals is what it sounds like, um, to put you in a box. <laughs> uh, so how do you go about setting your quarterly goals then? Uh, you just sent me this you know, long page document of you know yearly goals, I guess, but which we'll break down into quarterly goals. So how do you go about um, setting those goals? I think th- those types of goals, um, the quarterly goals, are that now we're talking business. This is, this is anybody that wants to achieve a milestone, a marker, um, in, in their life, usually dealing with finances. Mm -hmm. Um, so as artists, most people watching this are artists or in the creative field, that's going to be, even if it's, even if it's production, meaning, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to produce, you know, um, 20 paintings this quarter or, or whatever. Uh, your goal is, it's still going to translate into sales or money or your professional life. So I don't think I set, maybe it's a good idea. I've never thought about it. I've never set personal goals um, quarterly. Like Mm. quarterly goals to me is business. Mm. Like it's all business. Um, So that usually pertains to, you got your, you know, the goals that are like, before I die, I'm going to do this, right? Then I have like 10 year goals, like in 10 years, this is where I want to be, mm-hmm. you know, professionally. And then, and then it's like five to seven years here, three to five years here. And then we start getting really specific three to one. I always look at that three year mark. Where are we going to be in three years? 
then you got to break that down. Well, if I'm going to be there in three years, then I got to be here in two years. And if I'm going to be there in two years, I got to be here next year. Mm -hmm. So then once you have your one year plan and you know where you want to be at the end of the year, then it's easy. Mm -hmm. You, you start, then like you said, you just, you just, um, in order to accomplish that, what has to be accomplished every three months, every quarter, Mm -hmm. first quarter, this second quarter, and you almost plan all four quarters in a way, but you really dial into the quarter closest to you. And then as you live that out, you start getting your eyes on the next quarter, right? Mm -hmm. And, and pulling that into range, you know, so I think it's good to map out the year but then really dial in that nighty day because now that's going to go into tasks with dates. Like this has to be done by this date, period, end of story. Mm -hmm. Otherwise this thing won't get accomplished and then it's, you know, a whole snowball effect. Yeah. So you don't start over. Like once you're in the habit of creating goals for yourself, um, you know, it's, it's an ongoing, it's a, it's a never ending story and it, and it's, it's a continuum and it always relates to, you know, what you did last year. So a lot of that, that document I, I sent you pertain to what did we do last year Yeah, absolutely. and what, what were we talking about last year for this year? Mm-hmm. You know, how often do you revisit your goals or I guess maybe to get to like the heart of the question, it's rather, how do you keep your goals top of mind or like within your field of vision so that you're constantly working in the pursuit of those goals? That is a really good point. I, I really want to do better about that. I have, I do do it though. No, I do do it. Um, well, when we were on the airplane, I, I put on my, my task list, you know, okay, review your last year's goals, you know, look and see how you did. Did you hit all that? You know, Mm, and, and, you know, if you, if you didn't, you know, what the heck, what were you doing and how did you mess up? You know? So a postmortem. Um, yeah. So I, I, I read through all that. And when I was doing that, I was realizing, you know, if I did this more often, I probably would have hit more of these goals. And I was happy to say I did hit a lot of them. Mm. Um, but I think I would have hit all of them if I had kept them front of mind. So I, I, I did pretty well in the fact that they were all written down. If you don't write down your goals, you're, I mean, forget it. Mm -hmm. goals are not goals until they're written down. Yeah. So they have to be written down and they have to be written down in a place that you will be able to revisit. So, you know, we use notion, Mm -hmm. I use notion and I have my like personal spot on notion. And so I have goals as one of the headings and, um, and then within that are, you know, the 2023 goals. And so, and then that's broken down into, you know, personal goals, business goals, et cetera. And then, um, and, and so if I had just opened that more often, you know, I think at least once a month, you know, until you have it almost memorized. But I, I, I would say that I probably only looked at, in the beginning of the year, I looked at it all the time. But then as the year went, I don't think I did mm-hmm. as much. Yeah. Only periodically when we would have our quarterly. Mm-hmm. So I was probably looking at it like every, every three months. Yeah, we had the rocks at the top of the document, the meeting document, and that was so helpful actually. Yeah. Having it at the top because of the document. Because we looked at it every week. Every week. Yeah, that's good. I like that. And in but how can we make this more applicable to an artist who doesn't have like a team? Yeah, yeah, of, yeah. You know, business people um who, you know, they're meeting with well, on a weekly basis. I think, you know, it's just like if you want to work out, you have to have um what I've learned uh, cause I used to never work out. And then for the last five years I've worked out pretty consistently mm-hmm. and what changed it for me because I'm 50. So I didn't start working out until I was 45 mm. and yeah. So, I mean, I lived most of my life as a non-workout person. So what changed for me is I had a designated place, a designated time and designated clothing. Mm-hmm. So I had to have those three things. Mm. A ritual almost. Yeah. About it. Yeah. And it's like, I wear that at this time in that place to go work out Mm -hmm. and that all had to be set or I never did it as long as it was like, eh, wear if wear whatever you want, do it whenever you want. You'll find some time today and do it for 10 minutes, do it for an an hour. You know, it, so, Mm -hmm. um, that's what changed everything for me. So I think it's the same thing with goals is your first thing you got to figure out is, is when and where, Mm. 
I, I don't think you need special clothes to set goals. But <laughs> Maybe you do, though. But you though. know what? That's <laughs> something that we should get a cape or something, you know, or a crown. Or a crown, yeah. Yeah, like I have my goal crown on now. I bet that would work. Actually, though, yeah. I mean, I'm going to try it. Yeah, I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try it, too. I love that. Um, and it works Deirdre for Deirdre and I, out. we have our crown still from our wedding. So Yeah, you put um, on your crown and you're like, I'm going to review my goals now. And if I accomplish my goals, then next year I'm going to dip my crown in 24 karat gold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then it will be an even better crown. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then you can add a jewel every... Every every accomplishment, every yeah. milestone. <laughs> and then when you're like 90, you can give it to your great-grandchildren. And, <laughs> and then it's the okay, legacy. Okay, this is getting weird. I love it, though. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. So I think the first step is to designate a place. I mean, I don't mean necessarily a special chair. I think you can look at your goals wherever, but I mean, maybe you do, maybe you do need a special place that you go and think about your goals. But what I mean is like a digital space or a planner Mm. or like, you got to have a thing that you're not going to lose. Yeah. And for me right now it's notion. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess I've been using notion like a year, basically. Yeah. yeah, no wonder. Because I was like, I only have 2023 20, and 2024 goals in there. Mm-hmm. So what did I do before? Google I Docs? Wrote him, no, I wrote them down on sheets. my computer. I just mm-hmm. had them on a, like... Pages. I had them on pages. <laughs> or notes. I used notes. I started using notes because you can do hashtags and, have yes. your, and create your own search engine. Mm-hmm. So I used notes for a lot of it. Anyway, I think you just need to find a system that works for you. Mm-hmm. whether whether that's physical you know or it's a it's a it's a software something yeah yeah absolutely i i totally agree and then after that probably the next step would be you know when and like first is where right it's your location your safekeeping and then when are you actually going to like put a time on your calendar yeah i would say block out at least two hours um mm-hmm. to you know have that focused deep that deep focus on your goals because it's really it's it's probably one of the most important things you can spend your time on you know is like focusing on your goals um so and then what i tell artists and this is a habit i've i've lived by for at least since i've been a professional artist because i couldn't make it i could not produce and and do my work to pay the bills i could not produce the artwork Okay. So this is artwork production, Mm -hmm. these, those goals, unless I did this. And so I'm in this habit, you know, I think I've started doing that since I was 23, 23, 24, whenever I graduated. No, I guess I was 22 is when I graduated from college. Anyway, the second I hit, I hit the professional as a professional artist, I started doing this. And that is before my head hits the pillow Sunday night, I have my goals for the week written down and I know what I'm accomplishing that week. Mm-hmm. End of story. I like that. Actually, one thing just to add to that that I started doing recently is a, um, gosh, what do I call it? A work day, um, like a, a power down. Um, I didn't come up with the idea myself. I watched some video about it. Um, but basically, it's before you end your day. Um, for me, I have like a, you know, a consistent work schedule. So I typically end my day at 5 p.m. Um, you know, because that's when the nanny leaves and then I have Zion for two hours. So, um, that's typically around when I'm ending my day. So for the last 30 minutes of the day, I will review what I did that day. What did I not get accomplished that I need to still get accomplished and put that on the next day's schedule and then have all the next day's tasks planned out ahead of time so that when I wake up the next day, there's no confusion as to like what I'm doing that day. Yeah. And you know, it's like, you can just glide into the day and frictionlessly, you know? Mm-hmm. And so the same kind of goes with the week, but then I like doing it on a daily and you only need 15 minutes really to do right. that. You know, maybe in the beginning, 30 minutes, but, um, and I kind of started pairing, catching up with messages with that too. So sometimes it takes more than 30 minutes, but, um, but anyways, I think having the weekly cadence and the daily cadence as well really is a <clears throat> strong, um, combination for productivity yeah i think what you're talking about is the difference between goals and tasks Mm -hmm. so um to me goals are something measurable that's that gets you somewhere Mm -hmm. and then a task is the thing you need to do to accomplish that 
Yeah. It's the execution of that goal. Yeah. And so I don't know if I do it the same way as you, but Sunday night before I hit the pillow, it's like my goals for the week, which build into the monthly goals, quarterly goals, et cetera. Mm -hmm. No, that's exactly the same. Yeah. Yeah. But um, before I go to sleep at night, I do it before I go to sleep at night in Mm. my wind down before bed. Because if I don't, I'm, I'm tossing and turning all night thinking about Mm -hmm. what I got to do or not do, or did I do that? So then I, I bounce between my calendar and to doist. Mm -hmm. So whatever, whatever I have on my to-do list and that I didn't, like you said, I didn't get done. You should check out tick tick. Yeah. Cause it has the calendar on there and it has all the best features of to do it. It syncs with your Google calendar. Okay. So it's just, well, it imports into your Google calendar. So like I just used to, Tick tick for my yeah. Calendar, then I wouldn't need two things. Yeah, I mean, so other people will send you invites right on Google Calendar for meetings and stuff, and then that just automatically gets brought into your Tick Tick. And so, the downside is that it doesn't sync from Tick Tick to Google tick, Calendar. Tick Tick. I mean, what were they thinking? Like, know, it's like name. somebody who spent a long time on TikTok. And I know. Like, I literally TikTok is working. Let's call it Tick Tick. I saw it like two two years ago, and I didn't download it because I thought the name was dumb. The name (laughs) is dumb. Now somebody's going to come up with talk, talk. (laughs) Um, Okay. But I I would love to, we, I feel like this is great advice for a professional artist. Um, But let's kind of zoom out a little bit for, and, and maybe talk about how you would think about goals for your own artistic development. Well, I think it starts, it starts with a mindset. Mm -hmm. You, you have to like step into the identity of, I am a goal creating machine and I'm a doer and I, I'm changing my life. That's it. I'm, I'm not going to have this lame job anymore. I'm going to be a full-time artist or that's it. I'm going to stop telling people I'm going to paint, but I don't actually do it. Or that's it. I'm sick of myself. I'm, I'm tired of telling people I'm an artist, but I can't even remember the last time I painted or whatever it is. Um, you know, it, it, it comes from like an identity shift, you know, where you, you desire something you want to, you really want to live out what it is. Cause you know, life is short Mm -hmm. and you don't want to just wake up one day and be 50 and go, wow, I didn't, I didn't do the things that I, I wanted to do when I was 20, Yeah, you know, and, and live, you know, in remorse that you, you know, you didn't do something sooner. Or if you are 50, then you don't want to wake up when you're 90 yeah. or go to sleep forever. That's right. And you know, in other words, die. Well, and you'll regret. never, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you'll never get this day back. Yeah. This is it. So wherever you are, I don't care if you're 10 years old or you're 90 years old. Yeah. This is, this is the time you have left and, um, it's never too late. And but, but you gotta, you gotta make a shift. You gotta mm-hmm. decide I'm going to do something different and it's goals that will get you there. Yeah. And so I think just that identity shift is big and what it, what is it do you want? You know, um, it, it doesn't, you don't have, you know, we don't have to talk about being a professional artist. Maybe what you want is, um, to, you know, produce more, to paint more, to take serious, you know, your art. Maybe it's, you know, to leave a legacy, to leave a legacy, to have yourself live on after you've died, you know? I mean, who's that guy that we always joke around and we play, don't let your dreams be dreams. Just do it. Oh, um, Shia LaBeouf. Yeah, Yeah. but it's true. Like, don't let your dreams be dreams. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just, just do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. And the thing is too, it's just such a more fulfilling life too. When you, like it is hard to live creatively, I would say, until you get into the habit of it. And then once you get into the habit of it, it is probably the most fulfilling thing you can do. Mm -hmm. Honestly, that's what I'm kind of trying to get back into is, I mean, business is creative, marketing is creative, but I've been in systems for so long now <laughs> for this last year and building out systems. And I, there's value in systems too. You want to get back to the more creative aspect. Yeah. Back to the more creative aspect and, and literally creating, you know, mm-hmm. I think, um, you know, no matter what it is, where, where you're at, it could, it could be like, okay, 
you know, they, they're painting, they like the amount that they're painting, they're putting time in, mm -hmm. um, but not getting anywhere. Maybe the goal is I want, I really want to learn how to mix color fluently. Yeah. I don't want to sit here and have to think about color that I'm mixing. So I think like making a list of, you know, again, it comes from desire. What do I want? It, it's what you brought up. What am, what pain am I avoiding mm -hmm. and what desire or pleasure am I seeking? Yeah. So, uh, I, I want to mix better color. I want to learn really how to draw mm -hmm. by this time next year. I want to be able to draw anything I, I can draw completely accurately. Um, maybe, you know, you, you're just terrible at landscapes and all you know how to do is portraits. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, make a goal this year that you're going to go after landscapes and then break it down. What do I need to really learn? I need to learn brushwork. I need to learn how to mix greens. Well, I need to learn how to create depth and, and atmospheric perspective, or maybe you're terrible at portraits and that's your weak spot. And you're like, I want to master portraits this year and, you know, endeavor to do that. Uh, and whether that's take a class or practice or learning anatomy, I mean, whatever, there, there's a lot of ways to break that down into, into tasks. So I think once it becomes like, okay, six months from now, this is where I want to be with my portraits. Um, and okay. So if I want to be there in six months, then in three months, I need to, you know, be able to draw in proportion or I don't know, you know, you, yeah. you break it down so that you, you see yourself accomplishing mm -hmm. and getting somewhere in it. And that motivates you to keep going. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you start with your vision and then you determine your goals, something that excites you, that's worth working towards. And then you figure out your weaknesses. What skill, what is my skill deficit that I need to overcome yeah. in order to be able to actually see through my goal? Yeah. And you know, no matter what area that is, and then, then you know what you need to learn. Yeah, basically. And right. then it's simple. You just find the best resource that you can for learning that and then pursue. Yeah. You know? So Ellie, what are your artistic goals? My artistic goals. Yeah. Like for your own, mm. have you thought about like, I mean, you know, you've been a professional artist for 27 years now or whatever, but probably painting for 30 something years. Uh -huh. So I'm curious at your level, do you have artistic skills that you're like, Hmm, I want to, I really want to develop in this area. I have thought of, that's not what is like most pressing on me right now. Mm -hmm. I have thought about that and, and I have a goal. Um, but it's, it, there's no time limit on it. So it's not a real goal. It's, it's an a, infinite. Yeah. It's, it's one of those out there one day goals. Mm -hmm. Um, I do want to, this may sound weird, but I do want to, um, take an intensive in Italy, um, where I learn, intensely like old masters technique. Mm. I mean, I know it, but I, I want to know it, you mm -hmm. know? So, um, there's like some schools in Italy that, that teach that. And I would want, I want to do that. Yeah. Um, but so in terms of skill, but my, my artistic goal that I have for this year is two. one, I want to loosen up. I feel like I have that goal every year, but I'm serious this time. I want to loosen up. So I have a series that I have in mind that's going to help me be really, really loose and kind of move towards more uh, intuitive painting and less um, like looking at a source. Um, so that's that's uh, one goal. So I'm, it's going to be like landscapes. A lot of it's going to be landscapes with... I'm, right now I'm calling it fairies and fields, but I don't think that's really what it's going to be. Um, so I'm thinking like these angel light figures that are very abstract, that are backlit with these really like abstract fields. Mm. So that's that series. And then, um, and then another goal I have is that I really want to put a cause to my art. Mm -hmm. My art means a lot to me and I, and I feel like to other people it does too. So, so that I'm happy about that, but I really want to drive a cause and, um, some of our students have actually inspired me in that, in that way. Hmm. Um, you know, watching Andrea Jacobson to that, her, that when she does her art, she's, she's in a cause, you know, mm -hmm. this long-term cause. And so that was, that's been on my mind a bit. And then when we took this trip and I watched, um, I watched that movie that the sound of freedom, mm -hmm, yeah. um, it, it really like stirred that back up. And I even see the work I was doing in the past 
already was for that cause. I just didn't connect the two. So mm. that movie really got me to connect it. And so I, I'm, I'm really hoping I don't poop out and I, and I stay serious about it and, and that I, I really do it. And so I have like an idea going that I want to like really drive a cause. What do you think would cause you <laughs> to poop out, you know? Probably not seeing the results or this, like everybody else self doubt, mm. like, oh, I made this up. I just watched a movie, got inspired and you know. having those like tangible milestones. Yeah. Basically. Like really seeing it go somewhere and, mm -hmm. and affect, yeah. you know, um, because I mean that movie, if you haven't seen sound of freedom, it'll, it'll just, I don't know. Like I'm a, I'm a, I feel like I'm a different person since I saw it mm -hmm. and I can't, I can't get it out of my mind. And I just, when I was done watching the movie, I'm like, what am I doing with my life? Like my life is stupid and meaningless. I need to go to Colombia and save children. You know, mm -hmm. like I just, I just, I don't know. I mean, I'm not going to go to Colombia and save, you know, yeah. but I've, I was like, I got to do something. I yeah. can't, I can't just but sit you can around support in some way. Yeah. I got to do something. Yeah. So I just, I just feel like if I can see that what I'm doing is actually helping in some way. Mm or inspiring others, or I don't know, I got to see some, some evidence that, you know, what I do will, will affect, you know, something. Yeah. Then, um, then that will keep me engaged. It's like that, uh, what's that? It's in, it's in a, um, raisin in the sun or something, you know, hope deferred makes the heart sick. Like if, if you, if you don't see any kind of results or fruitfulness to your goals, your heart grows sick. You, you can't maintain. Yeah. That's the hardest part. That's where grit and perseverance come in. Um, delayed gratification. Yeah. You know? But you still have to see something. Yeah. You know? Um, absolutely. Yeah. So how, okay. In that circumstance, let's just keep walking this out. How would you go about seeking those short, those quick wins, let's call it. Um, in order to keep you motivated towards that long-term I think that's cause, a great point. You know? I feel like I'm learning a lot in this podcast. <laughs> cool. <laughs> um, I think that's a Me really- Me too, yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's a really good point is when you set up your goals is you, you got to set them up for quick wins mm -hmm. because you already have to know in advance, I'm going to poop out if I don't see something happening. So let's say you want to do portraits, you know, what's a quick win? It could be, I'm going to learn how to draw an eyeball like, you know, better than I've ever done before. In your first week, you could do that. Mm -hmm. And you could look at the end of the week and go, man, that's a good looking eyeball. Yeah. That's a, that's an easy quick win, right? Mm. Now, okay, I'm going to, uh, now I'm going to learn gesture drawing this week, you know, or, or whatever. I don't know. So build up some quick wins that, you know, uh, mount towards that. So that's a great thing for me to think about mm -hmm. with, with my strategy. Cause I have a strategy I wrote down for it. Mm -hmm. Um, and I need to review that and, and see what my goals are and go, okay, I'm going to need a quick win right here mm -hmm. or I might poop out. Yeah. Thinking about the cyclical nature yeah. just to kind of bring it full circle back right. to the beginning, you know, I know that after a certain amount of time I will lose interest unless I, you know, find some sort of win right. and, you know, and maybe that's my problem too, is that, you know, I mean, honestly with marketing, we've had wins all year, so that's not, and I, I'm not like giving up on marketing, but not to, not to bring it back to myself. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I can totally relate to that and the importance of finding those quick wins at those strategic moments. Right. Um, so, so when do you think you would need that quick win? after like a specific launch, like within a certain amount of time, like say you launch your series and you know, it's been it would two be at the weeks. Launch. Yeah. Yeah. So you need to have a certain, you want to have a certain marker hit, like, you know, X amount of painting sold X dollars donated to, um, you know, operation underground railroad or whatever. Um, and then receive and, you know, see the fruit of that, money that I donated, um, or, or seek it out and, you know, t see what lives I I'm actually changing. Right. Or something like that. Yeah. I mean, that's a bit, that's, that's sort of like, I would say not a quick win. I would say that's a, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's a, you yeah. know, but I mean, in the context of like an entire year, you know, that's something that you could do in two months. Well, okay. So I think to build this out mm -hmm. is 
the first painting that I go say public with this idea and I say, I'm going to, I'm going to actually post about this and share my heart. I mean, probably I'll write a blog about it is, is more accurate. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, that would, I I would have to see that this resonates with people Mm -hmm. because the cause is only going to work if, if others rally rally. with me, if I can rally. So my effectiveness to rally is, is going to measure, measure this art's just the vehicle for that. So I think that, you know, step one would be like, share my heart and, and I got to see that this resonates with people. Mm. If it doesn't, I don't think I'll give up. Mm-hmm. I know myself. I wouldn't give up at You'll that point. find another strategy. I'll just pivot or something. Yeah. But if that happens, you know, after three, four, five attempts, I'll be like, wow, what am I'm really doing something wrong. Maybe it's not God's plan. You yeah. Know? Right. Yeah. That so. would, that would make me really reconsider some mm-hmm. things. Yeah. It, that's kind of the balancing act right there is, you know, finding quick wins within the context of an infinite game and understanding when am I facing resistance versus when am I just, you know, about to, or when am I just pursuing the wrong thing? Right? It's true. It's true. I, I, um, I, I, you know, one time I, I lost a house and I, I thought I was fighting resistance and, and cause it's my house and, you know, I'm going to fight for it and I'm going to win. Mm-hmm. And after a year and a half of fighting, almost two years, uh, you know, we ended up losing the house and then I saw what we moved to afterwards. And from that, you know, the whole school thing happened. And like, I saw, once I saw the big picture and mm-hmm. I looked back, I realized I was absolutely fighting. I wasn't fighting resistance. I was, I was fighting, fighting change. I was fighting yeah. change or I was yeah. maybe even fighting God. Yeah. You yeah, know, God. it's like, yeah. that wasn't God's plan. Mm-hmm. Um, because you would never think losing a house is mm-hmm. going to be God's plan. That doesn't yeah. make any sense. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it's like you really got to know when when there's a struggle, you know, who who are you really fighting? Is mm-hmm. is this really what you're supposed to do? Is this the path you're supposed to take because after a while, you know, it could just be that that's not the path you're supposed to take, mm-hmm. but yeah. it could just be the path you're supposed to take. And that's why there's all that resistance. Yeah. So it's tough. It it's is really tough. tough. Yeah. 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 And if there was an easy answer, then. And there isn't. Yeah. You then just, it wouldn't be worth it. No. You know? I so. think that's, you only learn really hindsight, mm-hmm. I think, at least from, for me. Yeah. And sometimes even you fighting against the plan is a part of the plan. <laughs> right? Because it, it prunes you and makes you makes you better. Absolutely. Yeah. This and got way people, deeper than I thought it would. Well, some goals. people <laughs> some people are fighters and some people aren't, you know. Yeah. So how do you define or how do you try to think about what makes a good goal versus a bad goal? Yeah. Because there are bad goals. Certainly. Totally. I've no. set a million bad goals. Yeah. Um I mean I just set one last year. Um what was it? I have on my goal list that I will have a hundred thousand people on my email list in one year, in one year. So, uh, that's a bad goal because it wasn't realistic, Mm -hmm. but you know, it's not a completely devastating goal. Um, because at the time I believed it and thanks Grant Cardone. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, because, you know, I was in this, like, um, romantic place in my life where I I just thought, like, you know, set an outrageous goal that you really believe. And, 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 you know, if I didn't set that, maybe I wouldn't have achieved, you know. No, totally. But I I think it wasn't realistic. And I think I probably um, would have done better. So this year I'm dialing it back and I'm, I'm getting a little more realistic. So I think a bad goal is something that's not really achievable. Mm -hmm. It's just too outlandish. It's too, too big. Um, I think dream big, but set realistic goals. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, reach for the impossible dream for the impossible, but set realistic goals to get there. Yeah. And, um, because goals are all about doing, they're not as much about dreaming. Mm, That's a good one. I think goals have to be realistic, measurable, definitely dates, you know, it can't just be like, I want to get fit. Well, what does that mean? You know, like break it down to how much muscle mass do you want or how, 
like go go measure yourself like you went to that that place and got measured Mm -hmm. and you knew how much fat you had versus how much muscle mass and so you could go get measured again and if fitness in your mind means uh five ten percent um fat and body fat, yeah. body fat and i would say 15 percent at this point but yeah 10 <laughs> percent is like right okay yeah. well yeah well at some point i mean it would be cool to get down to 10 percent, but those are i drastic. mean i'd be happy to be under 30 you know what i'm saying <laughs> but um uh well anyway you get what i'm saying yeah yeah, yeah. that the, i want to get fit this year is not so last year i i set some fitness goals and I achieved most of them. So I'm very, I'm very happy about that. I had a fitness goal, um, because I wanted to work on flexibility and, and mobility. And so I had certain poses or things that I would be able to do, like, you know, be able to like completely touch my toes, be able to, um, anyway, I had, I had say these flexible mobility type exercises I wasn't able to do before. Mm -hmm. And, and so I wanted to be able to, to actually do them. And, and I, I, I did, and I worked on it. So that's, that would be a good goal, but a bad goal is just a generality. Mm. Like I want to be fit because what, what does that mean? You're not really measuring it. it has to be measured in some way and, and break it down. And you can have a bunch of goals. Like I, I can't even imagine, I would have to count them up, but there was so many goals on there, um, that were all under the, okay, this desire to get more Mm -hmm. fit, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, just going in the same vein, it's specific too. So basically we're talking about smart goals. (laughs) Yeah. I had another goal that I would, uh, I would weigh, uh, 135 and, and I don't, you know, but, but I, I did weigh 150 and now I'm like 143. Mm -hmm. So at least I, at least I went in the right direction. Yeah, I mean, and that's a measurable goal. That's realistic. And one year to go from one fifty to one thirty-five, that's only fifteen pounds. Totally realistic. Yeah. Um. So that was a good goal. I I did. But if fall you go short. to Mexico, if you go to Greece, if you go to London, uh, if you go. <laughs> yeah, and if you count all the weight I did lose, I yeah. way surpassed thirty-five. The problem is, I would go like up, down, up, down, up, yeah, down, yeah. up, down. So, yeah. but it, it, at least. You know, the, but that's a good goal because mm-hmm. it's measurable. Yeah. You know, I want to paint. Um, you know, I want to build my stamina and my productivity to where I can complete two paintings every single week. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, so many paintings per month. I think that's a a good goal. Yeah, I'm gonna paint. You know, twenty paintings each week. That's not that realistic. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, I, I think it's important to. Mm, have your goals always fit into the context of your vision or your destiny or your, your bigger goals, yeah. right? Like whatever your, uh, quarterly goals should fit in context to your yearly goals, which should fit in context to your three year goals and tenure and yeah. your lifetime, what you have to do before you die. And likewise, your monthly goals and your weekly goals all nest within that. And you know, Next thing you know, you have your entire life planned out. <laughs> yeah. And you know, another thing to keep in mind, I think is really important in terms of goal setting is don't beat yourself up. Yeah. Most people don't hit their goals. I, I don't hit all my goals. Yeah. For sure. If you are hitting all your goals, you're probably not set, setting high enough mm-hmm. goals. So, you know, don't uh, like, I know certain people who don't like to set goals at all. It's like a complete aversion to this person I know. Um, (laughs) who, and because he feels like if he doesn't hit the goal, he's like failed Mm -hmm. and he's a big failure and he he just can't stand that. So don't set a goal. Yeah. And so that's not the way to think about it. You are going to fail. You're not going to hit all your goals. You're going to mess up. And that's natural. That's normal. Like, I don't care who you are. Elon Musk, he doesn't hit his goals. Yeah, can, he's actually almost notorious for overpromising, you know. Yeah. But I mean, here he is, the CEO of multiple companies, and you know, one of the biggest movers and shakers out there right now. Right. You know, whether you hate him or like him yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Exactly. It's kind of undeniable. But absolutely, the worst goal <laughs> of all is no goal whatsoever. Yeah. So, or, even bad goals are better than no goals. <laughs> yeah. Or shying away from being a goal setter. Yeah. Because you're, I don't want to be disappointed. I don't want, well, well, you know, 
you're mm-hmm. probably going to be disappointed because it'll be hard to achieve much without setting goals. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I feel like this is kind of a good spot to wrap it up. But before we do wrap it up, I would love to um, ask you, what are some of your favorite books that have helped you in shaping your thoughts around setting goals? Mm. Hmm. Shaping goals. Or it could even be mindset, success, etc. Yeah, yeah. Okay, like years ago when I was younger, I read a lot of those books. I read all the Stephen Covey stuff about setting goals. Um, but so I think I think that got in. So I don't remember. Mm-hmm. But lately, I read uh, Atomic Habits, mm. and that equips you to actually create the habits you need in order to hit your goals. Mm-hmm. And then discipline is destiny. Even though I'm a very disciplined person, I loved that book. I think that book was excellent. It helped me become even more disciplined. And then I've recommended it to a lot of artists that I mentor and that have struggled with discipline because these days a lot of people aren't raised with discipline. Yeah. And um, because it would hurt their self esteem. And there are people that felt like it was it, because they grew up with very harsh. Yeah. Like parents that were very, you know, militant about things. Yes, so exactly. They, so Be- they reacted mm-hmm. and then it was like, who needs discipline? Who, so there's yeah. a whole generation of people that don't know how to be disciplined. Mm-hmm. And so anyway, I think that book, Discipline is Destiny, was fantastic. It really drives home that you're you're not going to achieve anything mm-hmm. unless you learn how to be disciplined. And it is learned. We, we think that, oh... Some people are just disciplined and some people aren't. Well, that's true. But the ones who are disciplined learn to be disciplined. And the ones who aren't disciplined learned to not be disciplined. Yeah, it's true. Through, through you know, the people in their lives and their experiences and rewards, basically. You have to work through at... Through habits. You have to actually work at not being disciplined, mm-hmm. just like you have to work at being disciplined. Yeah. So I would say those two books are... If you, if you read and take to heart both those books you will be a goal achieving person yeah. big time. Yep. I just want to add one book because yeah. it helped me a lot. Uh, was discipline equals freedom. Uh, so uh-huh. it's about discipline. Um, I haven't read it, that. I need to read that it's one. It's Jocko Willink's uh, perspective on discipline, which is. Yeah. He's a, good about goals and stuff. Yeah. And he is hardcore. Like very I, hardcore. If I ever start feeling soft or, um, or just undisciplined really, yeah. Or lacking motivation in terms of, you know, getting things done. Reading five pages of his book, even. Not yeah. even the whole thing. It's a short read, though. I think it's like 90 pages or something. Mm-hmm. Um, it's meant to be very tactical and just kick your ass and get you in shape. Yeah. Uh, but he... Discipline is, is so freedom, good. though. Yeah, it really exactly. Is. You, that, you're so bound yeah. in anything that will drag you down and and uh, make you less of who you are. It, it, it's you're you're in bondage to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, your bad habits, your bad attitudes, negativity, um, laziness, just you know, n- not having you know motivation for things and sticking to things and Mm -hmm. you know integrity with yourself making yourself promises and then breaking promises with yourself Mm -hmm. you know and that becoming a habit like all that stuff is pure bondage and and it makes you it's like a vicious cycle because you start feeling really bad about yourself um having low self-image um you start you know your identity begins to build around those ideas and, and so then of course you're going to struggle a lot harder with discipline, but if you break that, if you break that chain, that grip that it has on you and you really get disciplined and you build those habits and you're like, that's it. I can change. I really can change, you know, and just flip a switch and change. Mm-hmm. Um, you're set free. Yeah. It's, it's a great feeling to be set free from those things that hold you back. Absolutely. Totally agree. Sometimes it's the boundaries and creating constraints on yourself rules that gives you the freedom to do the things that you want to do. Yeah. It's like what it goes exactly with what you said before that goals are about doing, not dreaming. Yeah. And in order to do, you have to have discipline. Yeah. So that's right. Um, I love that. And, uh, I think those three books alone can change someone's life. Um, I think if you're watching this and you haven't read Ellie's book yet, 
Unemployable, that's a great book, I think, in terms of setting goals and just from a, a more narrative perspective. Um, and so you can find that on Audible with Ellie reading it. Now you have a taste of what Ellie, or maybe not a taste, but uh, now you know what Ellie's voice is like. She reads the book herself. So if you want to listen to that book, then you can check that out in the link somewhere around here. Maybe it's in the description. Maybe it's up there. Um, you got to have the discipline and look for it. <laughs> <laughs> and you can also find the links for the other books as well in the description too. So um so yeah, thank you, Ellie. This was a great podcast, super deep, and um, I'm excited to see, and inspired too, uh, but excited to see the impact that you have on those kids that need our help, and um, you know whether that's through Operation Underground Railroad or whatever, and how you tie that in with your art and your cause. Um, and as you said before, like it's really reliant upon the effectiveness of rallying other people. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to the audience, what I would ask of you, this is an ask, I know, uh, sort of taboo on YouTube land maybe, but leave a comment if you are inspired by this, if you are intrigued in what Ellie's going to do with her art. Um, and if you want to follow her journey, then go to her website, elliemilan.com, and you can subscribe to her artist Odyssey, where she'll be blogging about everything that you know she's doing within her art her new series you can read about the behind the scenes of what it's like to make a reality show and all a bunch of other stuff on her on her blog so go check that out help ellie get to 100,000 email subscribers <laughs> <laughs> let's make that a reality uh and if this was helpful for you then share this podcast with a friend because really when you share something that affected you deeply with another purpose it's not only good for them but it's good for you too because one you get that sense of like you know boost in yourself like hey you know i'm helping this person out but that person will associate the change that they make in their lives with you so it's good for you as well so if you found this helpful chances are your friends your artist friends will also find this helpful or anyone who you know who wants to set a goal in their life will find this helpful too so make sure to share this podcast with them uh, and as always like and subscribe stay tuned for more interesting episodes uh, that are coming up and thank you so much for watching let us know what you think and i'm excited to read your comments below so thank you